You're watching BBN Tonight on your official UK sports station, LEX 18. Presented by Central Bank, the official bank of UK athletics. Welcome back to BBN Tonight. One of our favorite things that the UK Sports Network does is their podcasts. And the Behind Kentucky Football podcast with Curtis Birch is always a great listen. Here are some of the highlights from his most recent episode with Darian Kennard. Along with all those preseason recognitions, you're also in a lot of mock drafts. And I know some guys in the past have dealt with like Josh Allen, Jamin popping up. Well, do you and try to ignore those kind of things because they can ebb and flow obviously yeah, so much sure. through a season. How do you how um, do you take that as an input? It's kind of the same thing to the awards. You know, people have that high standard and think that's where you know you would be or that's what they think of you. Um, it's kind of more of a uh, where people see you, not really a um, deciding factor. I'd say I look at it and acknowledge what people are thinking and how where they place me and stuff like that. But at the end of the day. Um, a lot of things can change you know nfl is a big business and they like certain players and sometimes you know they like the personality of certain players sometimes they don't so um, what i'm trying to do is just focus on getting better as an athlete and a player and i feel like you know they like my personality as it is so i'm going to continue um working on me being being a better teammate being a better leader for the team and you know, i'm gonna continue trying to uh, improve and just make sure you know those those standards that everybody has for me are blown out the water because i don't ever want to be just a regular, you know, average player. I don't want to be what people think I am. I want to be better than that. What is your mindset on on game days? What is the difference, like when you're going on and you know you got the game to play that day? How are you? How are you preparing specifically mentally? Focused in. I mean, really, I just kind of imagine not killing somebody, but knocking the helmet off. Best way I could put it. That's how I've always prepped. I've always focused in before game time. Um, Listen to my music kind of drift off and just imagine beating the hell out of the other opponent, you know, that's way I could put it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's sure. what that's what I do every game day, and it's just the mindset that we have as a whole line, you know, we're going to roll great people um, in a polite way, I guess. That's how you, that's how we like to say it, a polite way we roll great people. So, In a way that won't get you a flag. <laughs> Announced full capacity, uh, expected here for, for Kroger Field. Yeah. When you guys as players and coaches got that and saw that announcement, how, how excited were you? Uh, if I'm being real honest, that wasn't my first thought of being excited. My first thought was, damn, I got to really focus on the cadence. <laughs> because <laughs> cause I remember my freshman and sophomore year before the COVID really hit, we were down to like big games like Florida, uh, Texas A&M. Uh, you can't even hear somebody. Like I could be right here in front of you screaming at you. You wouldn't hear me. You'd have to read my lips. And that's what that's the first thing that hit my head. I was like, damn. I mean, it's going to be cool, yeah. but, like, we're going to have all that energy back. But at the same time, it's like, yeah, it's going to be a little tough. Mm -hmm. So, um, first thought, got to really focus on, you know, having good hearing for mm -hmm. the cadence. But uh, <laughs> other than that, you know, we were all excited about having full capacity, especially. I know a lot of other stadiums are going to be great, too, about it. So, um, we're excited for the season. We're excited to get everybody in Kroger Field for real. It's going to be fun. Everybody's going to be, you know, happy. And they're going to have a hell of a show when they come see us. When you look at your bio, it's a little bit interesting. Born in born in Youngstown, yep. hometown Knoxville, St. Ignatius. Walk through your your travels as a somebody when you were growing up. Uh, well, the reason I was born in Youngstown, my mom was living in Knoxville at the time. She went to go visit family up in Ohio because uh, abusive. My dad was abusive, and he didn't want to have me. So, and he, my mom felt like it was too dangerous to be around him. So she went to visit family. None of my family knew that, that she was pregnant because she was so young at the time. She was she just turned nineteen. Like she was so young when she was having me. So she only had like a little like baby bump, like no one knew, and she just wore baggy baggy clothes. So and then she went into labor up there, and I was born pre me. I was born two and a half months early. So they had to, my mom told me she was in a blizzard at the time, like with three feet of snow behind a snow truck, driving down to the hospital while she was in labor with me. And come to find out when she told, she told me that the reason she went to early labor was because her body was trying to reject the amniotic fluid because it was infected in her, in her set in the sack. So like we both almost died uh, while she was trying to deliver me. Basically, I stayed in the hospital until I was healthy enough to breathe by myself and be cool, um, be out in public. So then uh, she stayed in Cleveland for like another couple of days while she completely recovered and uh, let my family, the family that I had up there, um, see me. And then she went back there to Knoxville. And um, you know, there's a whole story between then and moving around. But mm -hmm. we moved around a little bit in Knoxville and. Um, she did what she had to do to make sure I had a roof over my head, clothes on my back, and food in my mouth. And um, eventually we moved in with my grandparents. 
So um, then we lived with my grandparents about eight years. For a little blip, we moved to Texas. We oh, moved, really? Lived outside of, lived outside, right outside of Austin, uh, a little place called Pearland. I went to Barbara Cockrell for like, like literally three months, three, four months. And then the little relationship that she had with the guy while we were down there fell through. Then we moved back to Knoxville and then got all of our stuff together and then moved to Kingsport. Lived in Kingsport from, moved, moved middle of my seventh grade year to uh, to Kingsport. Finished out my seventh grade year, finished eighth grade, went to freshman, went to Dobbins Bennett mm-hmm. in Kingsport and then moved from Dobbins Bennett up to Cleveland. Uh, okay. After my freshman year, and I went, gotcha. and I got into St. Ignatius, luckily, and you know, things kind of just rolled from there. Wow, really cool to hear him open mm-hmm. up there. And there is a chance that Kennard goes in the first round of the NFL draft after this season. Yeah, and a preseason All-American. That'd be <laughs> two first-round draft picks for Kentucky football after Jamin Davis went as the number 19 pick last season. How do they keep doing this? That's next on BBN Tonight. <laughs> 